after probably 10 hours worth of back and forth and back and forth, we decided to look at the Millennium Ignition. The 2055 is different than the one that should have come with the kit. Gonna go ahead and get rid of this because in theory, this is much better. It's got a much bigger cage on it. He's got the overrange on here. As you can see with my fancy pointer stick here, his variator should max out 100%. So on jetting, for reference, the 155 main jet that's in this carb is what I run in the runner, <laughs> which makes three times the horsepower of this bike. Maybe. This is not opening up all the way, um, and that's that's absolutely maxed out 100%. We're gonna go ahead and do the overrange. Is you've got your full variator here. Melosa calls it the multi bar, a die grinder, and you've got to basically carve this stuff out. Went to Super Sunday and let Kale ride it one year on it, and he hit the throttle and looped out. Clutch springs having it set up right is the difference between a bike that you have to use your feet to accelerate on and a bike that will flip over from a dead stop. Time happens, Paul. Well, I mean, you had half the day off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's nice about this is it replaces everything, the front pulley, your boss, and then this star piece and the variator. Got some different grooves here. They're all gonna be different angles. Um, the one I like to use is gonna be the one that's most tipped over this way. Didn't overrange, and then uh, <laughs> what happened? It's been uh, quite a few days. Okay. Bike's gotten a little dirty. <laughs> so where are you going to start? Um, uh, I mean, we did a whole bunch of stuff to this thing to figure out all the bugs. Okay, so this one was a struggle. It had a weird kind of a leanish idle on the main jet. No matter, so it's a 24, 24th PWK Fellini, um, MXS cylinder crank c16 this bike should be so we pressure checked it checked out good um this bike got crazy hot like 310 cruising 350 in like four blocks so typically it's timing um your squish and or compression and we know it's not squish compression because we set this motor up uh it's ignition timing way too lean um or an air leak. So we checked it has no air leak. We know the squish and compression is good. Um, jetting should be like a 118 to maybe a 126 on the main. Pilot should be a 38 to 45, somewhere in there. We went all the way up to a 155 main and a 55 pilot. And no matter what we did on the jetting, it was crazy hot. So obviously I thought, okay, he's got a brand new Millennium on here. Millennium Ignition, this guy. Uh, purchased elsewhere, not from us. Um, somewhat irrelevant, but irrelevant, but relevant, I should say. Um, went ahead and put a new Pelini carb on it just to eliminate something. Um, I figured worst case scenario, we'll sell that Pelini carb open box. So that's on the website. His used carb that came from us, it's been on the bike for five miles, can be yours and it <laughs> runs perfect. Uh, so the new carb didn't make a difference, but obviously we're just gonna keep going after it. After probably 10 hours worth of back and forth and back and forth, we decided to look at the Millennium Ignition. So this system is the right, well, okay, it was ordered for pre-bug. Um, the system has the, um, the pickup is internal here, where normally it's on the outside on a regular pre-bug. You don't have really any room for adjustment. It can only get bolted on um, one way. It could go upside down in theory. Uh, and then you've got your flywheel, which has your two keyways here. 
what we found is this thing was so far advanced and there was no way to bring it back to the timing where it should be. Surprised it didn't blow a hole in the piston. We stopped before it got super hot. Come to find out, the supplier who sent this kit, um, this part number here, the 2055, is different than the one that should have come with the kit. Now you're, what tells this when fire is internal to these magnets. So basically, if you, the way I could explain it is if you take a magnet and go, or if you take a piece of steel and go all the way around, it's gonna hold it, and then one spot pushes it away. So that's where you pick up this. There's no real way to, I mean, you can put a timing gun on it, look at it. Um, went ahead and just put the stock one on, and the temps went from 360 in three blocks to 255. Um, took a long time to figure it out because everything was brand new, everything looked good. We we're all like, okay, did he install this wrong? PJR did an awesome job, everything was good, this was not his fault. Simply, um, the supplier that sent him this kit gave him one with the wrong flywheel, and my guess is this one is basically internally keyed differently to be more advanced. The only way you could have corrected this would be to kind of like notch this plate and try to roll it around, but at the end of the day, you know, we, we don't really want to invest a ton more time and energy. He just wants to get it going and get it dialed. Now that the ignition is good to put the stock one on, now I'm going back through and jetting it because now the jets are giant, right? Um, because the jets were were huge to cool the bike due to the um, detonation. So keep in mind, if you guys have a bike that's running advanced like this, you will blow up your motor. It's just a, it's just a matter of time. Um, we've been replaced the tempering we took a trail tech out of inventory um to to check like okay maybe the the because bike ran great um a little bit of a weird idle uh so we we put a new trail tech on it just to verify it was on the money so everything looked good um where we're at now is uh that's on good went ahead um at the time of the build we didn't have the stage six intakes there on back order. So uh, we use this larger MVT style intake with the uh, Melosi cage. Gonna go ahead and get rid of this because in theory, this is much better. It's got a much bigger cage on it. Um, so this is going away and uh, the new intake's going on. So once the Honda Bond cures on there, we'll pop this carb on. I'm gonna throw probably a 120, probably 120, 122 main jet in there and a 42 pilot. And I have a feeling it's gonna rip. Um, so that's where we, that's, Kind of what we went through on the bike um it's been a lot of work but every once in a while you get stumped on stuff because it's that's not a common thing to have a supplier send you something with the wrong um the wrong the wrong flywheel so it's an i don't know if they they got it and it from mbt and it was wrong or they got one and they're like hey we're gonna put a kit together with all these parts on the shelf assuming that it was right so i don't really know what happened with that but that's between him and the vendor um Transmission should be really close. The rollers need a little bit of tuning. Um, but yeah, we went ahead and uh, kind of show you guys what's involved. So we'll just show you guys what's involved with clearancing the um, the CVT. He's got the overrange on here. As you can see with my fancy pointer stick here, your belt rubs here in all of these areas here, this webbing. Obviously it's not rubbing here now, but when the belt goes down the back and up in the front, that's where it's gonna be in this area. So what I typically do is I put this thing together, I'll hold the belt up against the case, and then I'll take a Sharpie, and I'll Sharpie here, here, and on the back side. Basically, you're just grinding and grinding and grinding, getting that to clear, and then also on the top, um, you've got a spot right here, here, and then you've got a little bit back here as well, too. Um, that's where you have the clearance for the belt. Here on the case too, it's really tight. It, it's one of those things where you kind of want to go bare minimum, right? Um, because you don't want to take too much material away from the case because that's where it gets the strength from. Um, so you're kind of going bare minimum, but you also don't want the belt to rub. Another thing with these bikes here, you guys can see my Sharpie marks all through here, this whole area here. And you have to really take your time with this because if you go crazy with your Dremel, you're, you know, you're hitting it too hard. You're gonna bust through this this cover here and you're gonna leak your oil out and then you have to get a new cover. So keep in mind here when you're doing this, what I do is is I take a Sharpie and I'll, on this cover, I'll Sharpie this whole kind of edge in here. I'll take the pulley, I'll slide it on and I'll roll it back and forth and you'll see it slowly kind of um, scratch away that Sharpie mark and then you grind it, Sharpie it again, grind it. This process here of grinding and clearancing the CVT probably took me, probably three hours back and forth and back and forth. And, and when you do that, you wanna make sure you put something over your carburetor um, because metal shavings go everywhere. Take the case out. Yeah. It, uh, it gets in your face, it gets in your hair, it cuts your hands wide open. 
Um, don't do as I do and not wear gloves. You should probably wear gloves. Um, but yeah, just take your time, trim in here. There was a customer that I saw that um, didn't do this and he had his, it basically ruined the pulley and the pulley fell apart because it was constantly binding and scratching up against this area. So everything spins, um, every spin, everything spins nice and free now. This variator should max out 100%. Um, this should be a, about 70 miles an hour, 70 mile an hour bikes, nothing crazy. Um, not like a full race setup or anything, just a super strong, um, healthy 70. After, after I get the jetting done and get it, the motor tuned, I think we're gonna go over the brakes because these Adelin levers, these Adelin levers, they stick. So, so you're saying that, 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 that's not supposed to be no, like that? No, no. So, um, guys, I can't stress enough with these bikes if you're, gonna do a build and you don't want to spend a bunch of money stick with your stock controls um, these look cool but the feel is really bad they squish it just it just feels like squeezing a metal sponge um, they squish all the way down to the bars and this one here is really loose too this sticks it, this one I'm gonna bleed it um, but just the, the quality on the Adeline stuff is just it's just not good so we sold it for a little bit and decided it was a bad idea um, so we just kind of clearanced it out. Uh, this side you can use your stock one. If you don't want to use your stock master, uh, use a, uh, Maguras aren't too bad. Uh, Brembo, just, you're even just a better, an NCY honestly would be better, better than these because they're just not very good. So we're going to try to get it the best we can for him. Um, but the, this side is just, it's just bad. There's really no other way to explain it, but it's funky. It's like a two piece. What's going on here? It's just the machine. It's not machined. It's cast, and so it's. I mean, it's not not made right. <laughs> well, I get what it's doing, but it's like there's a spring in here. Yeah, I mean, it's, it doesn't make any sense. So when you this is supposed to be like this, and then you can move it, but it's not machined. It, it's not made right. The, the casting isn't yeah. made properly. So they're made off of the original brand of these that first ever came out was Spiegler back in like the 90s mm -hmm. and that this was the exact design and then so they, they copied them copied them and they caught then other people copied the copies and copied the other copies and then you end up with this copies like if you were to see real copies. Spiegler they don't move they're just super sold okay they don't make them anymore no they still make them but they, they make a little bit different style okay now. so Adlin stuff uh don't don't buy it yeah. it's no bueno stock stuff works way better it feels better and if you want to like ride wheelies you're gonna die you're gonna die on these like this this thing is is really sketchy so we're gonna get that all dialed away for him um, but yeah it's been a definitely been a challenge here dustin was a big help with the ignition that's when he figured out that it was the wrong um wrong fly but we pulled all of our pulled our mvts out of inventory pulled them all the boxes compared them um and that's we found our kits are different than the kit that this person bought. Well, initially you thought that it came from us, right? Initially I thought it did come from us and Dustin said, oh, the part number's wrong on the flywheel. Um, so yeah, so we're just gonna, we just wanna eliminate that whole problem, keep it simple. He also had a, the air shroud on this side with some chrome tuner thing. Um, it actually seemed like it was spaced further away from the flan fan blades, not allowing enough air to go over the top of the shroud. So we had a few things. There's a small air leak at the tempering here. That didn't seem like it was helping. The, the chrome shroud that he had wasn't helping too much with airflow. So on jetting, for reference, the 155 main jet that's in this carb is what I run in the runner, <laughs> which makes three times the horsepower of this bike makes about um, and if I held this bike wide open throttle, it would blow up in a quarter of a mile, probably. So with that giant jet, and that tells you something's way off. So if you keep putting larger and larger, larger jets in, your problem's not your jetting, your problem is an air leak or your ignition, um, timing, compression, squish. So that's a good tip of the tip of the day. Sweet, yeah. Brandon has tip of the day. Yeah. <laughs> oh, also these covers, you have to cut out here and cut out here. Uh, yeah, these are the STR8 covers, I think, or something, or SSP. Um, he's gonna finish cleaning it up, probably coat it because the chrome just chips off, but this part of the bell rubs here, 
and this part of the bell rubs here. So keep that in mind if you run this cover, um, which I would run a stock one if you can get away with it. You got to cut this out and this out to clear your belt. On the stock one, it's the same, so let's cut the it. The stock one, you shouldn't have to. I believe it's just this, because I didn't have to on my bike, um, but this cover is a different design than the factory one. Gotcha. So, yeah. All right. Go. ran me over. What? You almost ran me over. It's just part of the job. Yeah. Pat. It's uh let me go a little bit up in fuel, but it's pretty close. Feels good. How's the sound? Good. Really good. Yeah, I got it to like 360, so it's a little bit lean on the pilot still, so I'll go probably up one size on the pilot and then up uh up a couple sizes on the main. He's gonna have to tweak the jets any way you slice it because he's in California. It's rich now. It's gonna be richer now because it's it's uh, or I should say sorry, it's gonna be leaner here now because it's uh, it's colder. So um, it's probably pretty damn close as far as pretty pretty dang close. What is this? Just notice that. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it feels pretty good. I think we've kind of moved past the issue of. Transmission feels good, jetting's close. I'll probably go up a little bit and then be done with the motor portion of it and wrap up this wrap up this stuff. So 